Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on linear functions. Our objective is to represent linear functions using function tables and graphs and determine whether a set of data is continuous or discrete. Our real-world link is up, up, and away. The Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird has a top speed of 36 and 6 tenths miles per minute. If x represents the minutes traveled at this speed, the function rule for the distance traveled is y equals 36 and 6 tenths times x. Our first step is to complete the function table. And you can see here, when our input is x, we're going to take the rule 36 and 6 tenths times x. Our output's going to be y, and so our input output is xy. Our first one is done for us. We have our input of 1. Our rule, 36 and 6 tenths times the 1 minute. Our output is 36 and 6 tenths miles. So for 1 minute, we've gone 36 and 6 tenths miles. What about the 2? Well, we have 36 and 6 tenths times 2, and that is 73 and 2 tenths. And so our ordered pair is the 2 minutes and the 73 and 2 tenths miles. What about 3? Well, that would be 36 and 6 tenths times 3. And 36 and 6 tenths times 3 is 109 and 8 tenths. So our input-output, our ordered pair is 3, comma, 109 and 8 tenths. For 4, we have 36 and 6 tenths times 4, which is 146 and 4 tenths. And this is 4, comma, 146 and 4 tenths. Now, we want to graph the ordered pairs x, y on the coordinate plane provided. And then we'll answer the question, what do you notice about the graph? All right, well, our x-axis, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is our number of minutes Our y-axis is our distance traveled. So, as we go to make our graph, when we've gone one minute, we've traveled 36 and 6 tenths miles. So that's going to be somewhere around here. Our 2 minutes is 73 and 2 tenths, so that's going to be right around this neck of the woods. For 3 minutes, we've got 109.8 or 108 tenths. It's going to be somewhere along here. And lastly, our 4 minutes is 146 and 4 tenths miles, right around here. What do we notice about the graph? Well, it appears that these points are in a straight line. So the points seem to be in a straight line. Let's continue on. Now, to graph a function, sometimes functions are written using two variables. One variable, usually x, represents the domain, and the other, usually y, represents the range. When a function is written in this form, it is an equation. Like equations, functions can be represented in words, in a table, with a graph, and as ordered pairs. 
The graph of a function is the set of ordered pairs consisting of an input and the corresponding output. So in our example, the farmer's market sells apples for $2 a pound and oranges for $1 per pound. Marjorie has $10 to spend. Excuse me, Marjorie has $10 to spend. The function y equals 10 minus 2x represents the number of apples x and oranges y Marjorie can purchase. Graph the function and interpret the points graphed. Well, our first step is to choose values for x and substitute them in the function to find y. So we can make ourselves a table here where we have x, we can have our 10 minus 2x, which is our rule, and that will get us to y. So that's how we're going to make our table. Now, for our x values, we can have 0, 1, 2, and 3. And we can stop there for now. Now, when I make my substitution in, I would have 10 minus 2 times 0. Now, what is 2 times 0? Well, that's just 0. So this y is going to be 10. For the next one, when I have 1, that's going to be 10 minus 2 times 1. 2 times 1 is 2, and 10 minus 2 is 8. Well, for the 2 then, 10 minus 2 times 2, 2 times 2 is 4, and 10 minus 4 is 6. With the 3, 10 minus 2 times 3, 2 times 3 is 6, and 10 minus 6 is 4. And then I have, let's continue on, 4, and then 10 minus 2 times 4, 2 times 4 is 8, 10 minus 8 is 2. And we might as well finish our table here just to get to the end. We have our 5, 10 minus 2 times 5, 2 times 5 is 10, 10 minus 10 is 0. So now I actually have a completed table here of all of my possibilities. Now we want to graph these x, y, and so we'll have 0, 10, 1, 8, 2, 6, 3, 4, 4, 2, and 5, 0. So as we go to make our graph here, 0, 10 is there, 1, 8 is here, 2, 6 is here, then we have 3, 4, 4, 2, and lastly 5, 0. Now, I can draw this as a line here. Now, interpret the points graphed. Well, then, we can say Marjorie, oops, let's get her name spelled right here. Let's start that over. Marjorie, there we go, can purchase ten pounds of oranges comma six pounds of oranges and two pounds is of two pounds of apples
or also two pounds of oranges and four pounds of apples. Basically anywhere on this line is what she can purchase. So if we have ten pounds of oranges here, we have no pounds of apples or as we wrote, six pounds of oranges and two pounds of apples, or even two pounds of oranges and four pounds of apples, or anywhere on this line is what she can purchase for her $10. Let's continue on. Let's graph the function y equals x minus 5. Now here we want to make a function table. We'll select any four values for the domain x. Substitute these values for x to find the value of y and write the corresponding ordered pairs. All right. So once again, we'll have x. In our middle, we can write our x minus 5 so we can see for now how to set up our rules and y. Any four values for the domain x. Well, this is your choice on what you get to choose. Now, again, I would choose easier numbers to calculate with here. I wouldn't choose negative 1,452,757,252.2. I would choose things that you want to graph. For example, for our x's, we could have negative 1, 0, 1, and say 2. Now, for our x minus 5, this is going to be negative 1, minus 5, which is negative 6. Then we would have 0 minus 5, which is negative 5. We would have 1 minus 5, which is negative 4. And we would have 2 minus 5, which is negative 3. And now we can graph these ordered pairs. So we'll have negative 1, negative 6, so negative 1, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that would be negative 1, negative 6 right here. And then as for 0, negative 5, there's 0. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down takes me to 0, negative 5. And then 1, negative 4, 1. And 1, 2, 3, 4 down. So 1, negative 4. And then lastly, we would have 2 negative 3. 1, 2, 3. And I have my ordered pairs graphed. I draw a line that passes through each point. Well, I can very neatly draw a line up through there. And that is the graph y equals x minus 5. Let's continue on. What if we want to graph the function y equals negative 2x? Let's go ahead and make our function table again. We'll have our x. In the middle, we could write our rule negative 2x. And then we're solving for y. And so if I put in values for x, once again, such as negative 2, negative 1, 0, one, and I'm going to do a bonus fifth of 2. Now, I can put in negative 2 times negative 2, and that would provide an output of 4 for y. Or I could do negative 2 times negative 1, and that produces a positive 2. I could put in a 0, and that produces a 0. Or a 1 is negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2. And then for 2, I have negative 2 times 2, which is negative 4. Now, sometimes on your graph, you may not be able to graph everything. For example, negative 2, 4. I could certainly go back to negative 2, but I can go 1, 2, 3 up. I don't have the fourth on my graph. So I can pretty much just ignore that one and go to the next one. Negative 1, 2. Well, negative 1, 2. And that's right here. 
then I have zero, zero, well, zero, zero is right there. Then I have one, negative two. And then lastly, two, negative four, so two, negative four. And I can draw a line that goes through these ordered pairs. Oops. Pretty close. And again, this is the line y equals negative 2x. It's always helpful to draw or at least write the equation of our functions on the graph as well. So just to recap this last example, you get to come up with the x's. And if you come up with four or five, our examples sug are suggesting four. Sometimes that fifth is good in case one of them won't fit on the graph. And then substitute your values in for x, solve for y, and then graph for ordered pairs. Negative two, four, wasn't there. Negative one, two, fit. Zero, zero, fit. One, negative two, fit. And then two, negative four, fit. Draw a line through your graph, or your points at least. Write the function on your graph, and you're done. And speaking of done, that's it. Good luck.